So um, by and large, we got the same, <coughs> excuse me, the same situation here. So I could make a brand new WPF project or a Silverlight 3 project. And I'll just go to make a new WPF project. And I'll just put him in my code. Call it blend 3 demo. I'm not going to really demo too much here, but I just want to show you a couple of really neat things. First of all, we now have IntelliSense in our XAML editor, right? Which is great. So if I wanted to change the uh, border thickness, right? I want to change border thickness, right? I can now get some help here. If I come inside of my grid, maybe I'll just do that part manually, right? I'll start to get some real help. So I could make a button that has a height of 10 and a width of 100. Oops. And I could set the content to be OK, right? So as I'm doing this, of course, we'll just get the editor updated over here. Another great thing, too, is we now have a real code editor. So if I were to come back to my projects area, which they moved over here to the, the left-hand side, let's say I actually wanted to handle an event for that button. Well, first thing is, we're going to come to the event area. So I can come to my click for that button. Maybe we'll give them a better name, the test button. Here's my click on click me. So when I hit enter, what we now get is a real integrated code editor. So I could just do a message box dot oops, message box dot show. Notice the IntelliSense here. Ta-da. So now when I run the program, I can actually work directly in Blend to author my code. Now, let's be honest here. This code editor is extremely helpful, but nowhere as feature-rich as Visual Studio. For example, this editor does not support any kind of code snippets. We, um, we're not going to get all the same features like a Visual Class Designer. There's no debugger, right? Uh, this is just a way to just kind of quickly put in some, some code. You're going to want to go back to Visual Studio to make it all pretty. Okay, but this is great because uh, it was always a pretty intrusive thing to have Visual Studio launch whenever you tried to handle an event. Now the downfall is if you get your you know, graphical artist here, they might do things like this and have no clue what they're actually doing. <laughs> so like all things in life, there has to be a little bit of education that comes about with this new bit of power. All right, folks, well, I have droned on and on long enough here. Thank you for uh, checking out this video. Just a really quick wrap up for you. Um, we've already kind of showcased what Blend can do, right? Remember that Blend is just a fancy markup tool. And uh, even though it was really kind of created with the graphical artist in mind, programmers like us can uh, get a lot of cool things done quickly. We talked about some of the real basic pieces. Um, I was hoping that I, I pulled together the importance of working with these basic shapes. You know, shapes give us brushes and transformations, which give us resources. All of these things work together with animations to make custom templates and styles. We also took a quick tour at the beginning about making custom content. Then I just showed you a couple teeny things about uh, Blend 3. So hopefully this has demystified the tool to some level for you. Remember, lots of information can be found in the F1 help system. So if this served you, that's great. Uh, have a good day, everybody.